The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. Lucky's pay more. Yes, at the tobacco auctions, Lucky's pay more. Millions of dollars more than official parity prices for fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. No doubt about it. L-S-M-F-T. L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Imagine you're at a tobacco auction. The buyers crowd around the baskets of ripe, fine-flavored leaf. The auctioneer chants and the bidding begins. As a basket of extra fine, light, mild leaf is offered for sale, as the price climbs higher and higher, at the peak bid, time and again, you hear... And another basket of truly fine tobacco is bought by the makers of Lucky Strike. Yes, Lucky's pay more, millions of dollars more than official parity prices for fine tobacco. So for more real, deep-down smoking enjoyment from every puff, every pack, Smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. Prove to yourself how much finer, milder, more enjoyable Luckies really are. You'll agree, in all the world, there's no finer cigarette than Lucky Strike. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Barry Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Gentlemen, let's go back an hour. Jack and Mary are on their way to the studio. Rochester is driving. Gosh, it's certainly a warm day, isn't it, Jack? Yeah. You know, it was hot yesterday, too, and Friday the temperature reached 105. Yeah. <laughs> Say, Jack, wasn't it thrilling the Hollywood baseball team won the Pacific Coast pennant this year? Uh-huh. And the National League pennant race is tighter than it's been in years. Yeah. For heaven's sake, Jack, put down that knitting and talk to me. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mary. I'm trying to finish these socks for Phil. It's only 90 days till Christmas, you know. Jack, Phil has been with you 12 years, and you're giving him socks for a present? There ain't no present, Mr. Harris. Hold them. That's right. <laughs> You know, Mary, it is warm today. I wonder if we could try... Rochester, how'd you know I wanted the top down? I didn't. We just went under a low tree. <laughs> what? Who needs push buttons? <laughs> well, leave it. It's nice this way. <laughs> and, Rochester, you better slow down. I can't, boss. We haven't got any brakes. No brakes? What do you do when you come to a railroad crossing? We get out and pick up coal. <laughs> Rochester Those diesels are ruining us <laughs> Rochester, don't be funny, just drive Say, Mary, do you think... Rochester, you're not making a turn Why have you got your hand out? I'm feeling for the studio You're... You're feeling for the studio? Yeah, and it's smart, we'll never see it <laughs> I know what you mean. Say, Mary, I was just thinking of something. It's a, been a long time since you sang a song on the program. How about doing one today? Oh, not today, Jack. I was at the Navy USC football game yesterday, and I cheered so much I'm hoarse. Oh. Well, we won't have the sportsman quartet there at the Orpheum Theater this week. Boss, so if you I... want more music on the program, why don't you play your violin? No, I think I will. I just put four new strings on it. You did? Yes. You'll hear them all on CBS this fall. <laughs> I can hardly wait. Thanks. Oh, Rochester. <laughs> Rochester, we're only a block from the studio. You better start looking for a parking space. Look for a space? Are you kidding, Mary? Rochester, drive it right into the studio lot. Mr. Paley, the head of CBS, assigned a reserved parking space especially for me. Gee, they sure treat you nice, don't they, Jack? Mary, all the networks are nice. And it's about time people realize that there's no animosity between them. There isn't? Of course not. Now, take CBS. They even put Johnson's Wax on the floor. <laughs> Jack, CBS didn't put it there. So many stars have come over, they've cracked it in on their heads. <laughs> on their heads? On their shoes? <laughs> they 
must be acrobats coming in. <laughs> We got acrobats now walk in on their head. <laughs> Shoo! So many stars come over, they tracked in. Oh, we don't through. have to do it through it. Again. <laughs> it doesn't matter how it got there. The fact that it's not there proves that. <laughs> Rochester, here's the studio lot. Turn right in. My parking space is third on the left. I know. Rochester, what'd you stop here for? There's another car in there. <laughs> How do you like that? Imagine anyone leaving his car in my, my parking space. What a nerve. When I came to CBS, this space was assigned to me. And if anyone else thinks they can use it, they're crazy. Oh, boy. Boy, who does that car belong to? Mr. Paley. Well, don't just stand there. Dust it off. <laughs> Dust it off. <laughs> Here. Come on, Jack. Just a minute, he's using Phil's sock. <laughs> Rochester, you don't have to wait for me. You can have the rest of the day off. Thanks. Hey, say, boy, I'm going out tonight. Would you mind giving me my salary today instead of tomorrow? Yes, I can do that. As a matter of fact, Rochester, I have your pay already. Here's your envelope. Thanks. Now, come on, Mary, let's hurry oh, into the... say, boy. What is it, Rochester? You always pay me in dollars. How come it's pounds this week? <laughs> I'll explain it to you later. <laughs> Come on, Mary. Oh, brother, you don't miss a trick, do you? Never mind, just walk in on your head. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Mary, we gotta get in the studio. I feel good today. Again, this couldn't happen again. Da-da-da-da. Oh, darn it, I forgot to get my violin out of my car. Again, I hope it happens again. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's not funny. Now, let's go in. Hello, Mr. Benny. I've been waiting for you. Oh, Mel Blank, waiting for me? Yeah, you got a part that I can do on your show today? Mel, I gave you a part on my show last week. Yeah, but I didn't get a chance to do my imitations. I imitate Mickey Rooney, Lionel Barrymore, and Al Jolson. <laughs> <laughs> Mel, look, there's no room on my program for imitations of Mickey Rooney, Lionel Barrymore, or Al Jolson. Nah. Now cut that out! <laughs> now look, Mel, when I have a part for you, I'll let you know. Come on on. Come on in, Mary. On your head. On. <laughs> Guys, that guy's been that Mel Blank is such a pest. Well, here's my dressing room. Jack, the door is open. Open? I wonder. Well, what do you know? I've got a visitor. Edgar Bergen. Hello, Edgar. Oh. Hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Well, Edgar, welcome to CBS. Well, thank you. You know, you know, I, I don't do my first program until next Sunday night. Oh, still rehearsing, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've already started my season. I did my first show on the 11th. Did you hear it? Uh, no, no, but on the 12th, CBS sent for me. Uh... <laughs> what? Yeah, uh, Bergen, 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 uh, will you get me out of this football uniform? USC doesn't need me anymore. No, I see. Yeah, yeah. I'll mow them down. Yes, I know you will. Charlie, Charlie, we've got company now. Oh, have we? Hello, Charlie. Well, you beautiful doll, you... <laughs> oh. <laughs> Pucker up your lips. I'm coming in for a landing. <laughs> Charlie, you should be ashamed of yourself. Such disgraceful behavior, kissing Miss Livingston before you've been properly introduced. I'm sorry. When a gentleman meets a lady, first he should tip his hat. Uh -huh. And then says, how do you do? Then he should inquire as to her well-being. And then he should gently take her hand and respectfully bow from the waist. Bergen, Bergen, those are the kind of details that slow down a man's life. Is that <laughs> Come to my arms, you luscious little hunger. Oh, all right, Charlie, please, please. <laughs> now, don't be so rude. There's someone else here. Yeah? Yes, that's Mr. Benny. Uh, hello, Charlie. Welcome to CBS. Shay. Put it away, bub. <laughs> I'll pick my friend. <laughs> what? Uh, you can stop. <laughs> 
You can stop fluttering those big blue eyes, too. They don't do a thing to me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, where were we, Mary? Oh, yes, you <laughs> luscious little tomato. Let me put my arms around oh, you. Oh, no, 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 Charlie, please don't uh. kiss me again. When your late lips meet my, my blood goes to my head, a cold iciness uh -huh. goes to my feet, and a wild wave of emotion rushes to my fingertips. <laughs> I got this dame going in all directions. <laughs> Mary, Mary, stop teasing him. Your blistering is enamel. <laughs> well, Edgar, Edgar, if you don't mind, I got a lot of things to do now. Well, uh, thanks, Jack, for dropping into my dressing room. No, no, Edgar, this is my dressing room. No, no, this was your dressing room. What do you mean, was? This is my dressing room. When I came over here, Mr. Paley gave it to me. I'm sorry, Jack, but they've switched you to dressing room four. All my things are here, and they're going to stay here. Well, I'll throw them out. You lay one hand on those clothes, Oh, and yeah, I'll take put up your yes, suit. Boys, yes. boys. Let them fight, Lizzie. Let them fight. The most they can do is lean on each other. Oh. <laughs> Edgar Bergen, if you think you're going to use this dressing room, there's only one thing I can say to you. I'll dress somewhere else. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Thought he put one over on me there. Dressing room four. It's all the way down the uh, hall. Jack, here comes Dennis. Oh. Oh, hello, Dennis. I've come to say goodbye. I've been drafted. <laughs> Drafted? Don't stand there. Salute me. <laughs> what? Uh, Dennis, do you mean No, no, that... Mary, Mary, you stay out of this. Let me handle them. Now, Dennis, look at me. I just want to ask you one thing. The war has been over four years now. How come you got a draft notice? I won it on a quiz program. <laughs> a quiz program? Yeah, I got a bicycle, a refrigerator, and two glorious years in the Army. <laughs> Mary, Mary, I beg you to stay out of it. Now, Dennis, forget this silly talk and get into the studio. Oh, I can't. I got a report to my regiment. We're being sent overseas. Uh, you mean Mary, that... Mary, you won't listen to me, will you? Now, for your own good, let me ask him. I'm gray anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you and your regiment are going to be sent overseas, huh, Dennis? Uh-huh. To Germany to take over supplies? No, to Stromboli to bring back Ingrid. Dennis! <laughs> Now, stop talking and rehearse your song. Okay. Come on, Mary. Oh, well, Mr. Benny. What is it? Good yantif. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. 
away to her side and make her your own for all through your life. You may dream all alone. Once you have found her, never let her go. Once you have found her, never let Let's see. Where's that dressing room they changed me to? Oh, here it is, Jack, right here. Number four. Oh, yes. Say, look at that, Mary. Look, they put two stars on the door. I guess they're trying to make me feel good. <laughs> Let's go in. Uh, hello there, Mrs. Benny. Well, hello, Miss Benny. Amos and Andy. <laughs> Hello, boys. Oh, hello, Miss Livingston. Excuse us for being in our bathrobes. Yeah, we is pressing our pants under the mattress. <laughs> well, fellas, it seems you could have done that in your own dressing room. This is our dressing room. Uh, yeah, sir. This dressing room here was given to us by the head man of this network. And he said if anybody comes in and gives us trouble, that we should very gently uh, throw him out. That's what he said. Yeah. And... <laughs> On his head or on his shoes? <laughs> well, he, he, he told us one thing. He, he requested that we keep the bounces down to a minimum anyway. Well, fellas, nobody's going to start any trouble. Obviously, there's been a mistake. Anyway, you don't do your opening program till next Sunday. What are you doing here so early? Well, we don't like to leave things at the last minute, so we down here at the studio to test the acoustics. <laughs> the acoustics? Oh, yeah, so you see your voice comes out your mouth, it hits the side wall, hits the back wall, then it hits the other side wall and comes right back to you. Yeah, that's what's known as a three-cushion shot. <laughs> well, I still can't understand them giving you my dressing room. Anyway, I'll take it up with Mr. T Paley. Come on, Mary. <laughs> Say, Amos, uh, Mr. Benny was a little upset because we got this dressing room, huh? Yeah, well, that ain't what's bothering him. He's upset because the day they stop daylight saving time. Well, what's that got to do with him? When they stop any kind of saving, Mr. Bennett takes it personal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. That man is closer than the pupils on a cross-eyed flea. Pretty good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Lift up the mattress and see if the crease in our pants is as sharp as we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, pardon me, boys. I left my hat in here. Oh, yes, sir. Here you are. Uh, thanks, Andy. So long, Amos. <laughs> yeah, I can't understand why I'm being pushed around here. They take my parking space, my dressing room. What next? Oh, Jack, Jack. Oh, hello, Don. Oh, Jack, I've been looking all over for you. Boy, am I excited. Why, Don? What happened? Well, you know how hard I've been trying to reduce? Yes. Well, I finally made it. I'm down to 165. <laughs> down to 165? How did that happen? I weighed myself on an English scale, and they cut the pound in half. <laughs> If you're going to tell jokes, why don't you get one that we can use on the program? Well, Jack, I thought it was very funny. Don, I'm not questioning the value of that little gem. <laughs> it has its points. I mean, it's not only topical, but it stinks. <laughs> Believe me. Well, then listen, Jack. I've got another joke that'll kill the audience. It's so funny that... No, no, I'm afraid it's a trifle dairy. 
daring? You mean a little risque? What is it, Don? What is it? You can tell me we're out here anyway. What is it? Huh? Well, come on, let's get away from this crowd. Don, that's you. <laughs> what, 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 what's the joke, Don? What is it? Well, uh, the way it was told to me. It seems that a traveling salesman's car broke down and right in front of a farmer's house. Yes, 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 yes. yes now, yes. this farmer had a beautiful daughter. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So the salesman knocked yeah. on the door, and when the farmer opened it, he told him that his car broke down and that he was a salesman. Yeah, 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 go ahead. So the farmer's daughter, who uh -huh. was standing there, said, a salesman? And he said, yes, I sell Lucky Strike cigarettes that are made of that fine, that light... <laughs> Naturally, fine tobacco. And Lucky Strike pays I know, more. Don. I know, I know. Oh, you heard the story. No, no, no. Look at it. I know that Lucky Strike pays more than the official parody price. But what about the salesman and the farmer's daughter? Right? Well, just then, get this, just then the phone rang. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. And when, when the farmer uh -huh. left the room to answer it, yeah. the salesman walked over to the farmer's daughter and said, Yeah, yeah, yeah. What'd he say? What'd he say? Yeah. What'd he say? <laughs> Leave her alone, then. What'd he say? I've been smoking Lucky Strikes for now for 25 years. Because they're so round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. And then... Yes, yes, and then? The daughter was so happy, she fixed the salesman's car and he drove away. <laughs> Don. Don, that's the story? Well, that's not the original virgin. I told it to the sponsor, and he switched it all around. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Jack, Jack, I thought you didn't like the story. I just remembered the original one. <laughs> no wonder the sponsor changed it. It was about lifesavers. <laughs> See you later, Donzie. I'd tear up his contract if it wasn't tattooed on his back. Jack, where have you been? I just left Don Wilson. He told me a wonderful story. What was it? Oh, I couldn't tell it to you, Mary. But it's so good it would be worth your marrying me just to hear it. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Mary, look at when we... Hey, how about it, Mr. Benny? Can't you find a part for me on your program? Mel, will you stop following me around and go home? Somehow, my wife is never there. She's always out playing bridge. Bridge? Yeah, she plays with Mrs. Bob Hope, Mrs. Ray Milan, and Mrs. Al Jolson. <laughs> Say, Mel, will you please go away and leave me alone? Come on, Mary, let's get into our studio. I wish Mel would stop bothering me. Well, look who's here. Hi, Jack. Red Skelton. <laughs> running into everybody today. How have you been, Red? Oh, fine, Jack. Gee, I haven't seen you since that night at Claudette Colbert's party. Oh, yes, what a party. <laughs> you know, Red, I haven't danced that much in all my life. Yeah, imagine Claudette trying to cut in on us. <laughs> <laughs> well, I waltzed into that one. <laughs> Look, Red, I know you have to rehearse for your opening program next Sunday, but don't use Oh, Jack, wait a minute. Red, aren't you going to say hello to me? Well, dee, 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 dee. <laughs> Look, Red. Red, if you don't mind... Well, I'll look, be with you in a minute, Jack. I want to run through a scene. Look, Red, if you don't mind, All I... All right, Mr. Skelton, let's run through that Western scene. Oh, yeah, well, I'm ready, okay. Ready? Ready. Come here, you varmint. This is Dead Eye you're messing with. Are you the dirty hombre that's been stealing the cattle off my pappy's ranch? Yeah, look, Red. Are you the hombre that broke into my house and stole the pigs right out of my living room? Yeah. You the know, same hombre that blew the steel right out of Grandpa's mouth? Yeah. Well, we're both going to fight a duel. I'll count three and we'll both draw. You ready? Ready. One, two, <laughs> oh, three. Like that, they fall for it on this network, too. <laughs> That's pretty good, eh, Jack? Yeah. I thought it was very exciting. Say, wait a minute, Red. Yeah. Red, that actor you shot, why doesn't he get up? Oh, well, we use real bullets. <laughs> we, we don't believe in fooling the audience, you know. Okay, Joe, sweep them out, will you? Sweep them? Red, Red, you, you really shoot the actor? Well, you see, once I didn't, I had to paint. Oh. <laughs> Say, Joe, should 
we run through that scene again? Well, we ain't got no more actors. You shot four of them already. Red, Red, you mean every time you go through that scene, you shoot an actor? Sure. Oh, Mel! <laughs> You wouldn't dare. I wouldn't, eh? Lucky's not around. Now, let's try that scene again on the other mic, Mr. Skelton. Okay, now this time, let's... What? Ooh. Ooh. Red, Ooh. Now, how'd you happen to slip? Well, you see, I just came over and I still got wax on my head. <laughs> all your characters. Now, how about getting out of my studio so I can do my broadcast? Your studio? Didn't they tell you? Tell me what? Well, you've been moved to the Widow Studio down the hall. <laughs> the Widow Studio? <laughs> how do you like that? First, they take my parking space, then my dressing room, now my studio. If they think they can kick me around, they got another thing oh, coming. Jack, don't stand around here grumbling. You better back hurry to the Widow Studio. It's yeah. time for your show to go on the air. Oh, it is, eh? Time for me to go on the air. Uh, well, I'll fix them. Let them start the show. Jack, look what time it I is. I know what time it is, but I'm going to teach them a lesson. Mary, there's a radio. Turn on. Let's see how they're going to get along without me. Okay. And now here he is, the star of the Lucky Strike program, Mel Blank. Mel Blank. <laughs> When you hear that famous chant, remember, luckies pay more, millions of dollars more than official parity prices for fine tobacco. L-S-M-F-T. L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes, the independent tobacco experts can see giant baskets of fine tobacco, one after another, go to the makers of Lucky Strike. Here's what Mr. Al Rogers, veteran auctioneer of Robertsonville, North Carolina, recently said. I think you'll agree that an auctioneer like myself ought to know good tobacco. And year after year, I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy fine, prime, ripe leaf. That's just right from mild, good smoking. I've smoked Luckies for ten years. And a recent survey reveals that more independent tobacco experts, auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen smoke Lucky Strike regularly than the next two leading brands combined. So for your own real deep, down smoking enjoyment. Smoke the smoke, tobacco experts smoke. Lucky Strike. Remember, to give you a truly finer cigarette, Luckies pay millions of dollars more than official parity prices for fine tobacco. Good reason to make your next carton Lucky Strike. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank Amos and Andy, Edgar Bergen, and Red Skelton for being with us tonight. And you'll hear them all on CBS next Sunday. Good night, folks. Be sure to hear a day in the life of Dennis Day. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.